Joining us now, Senator Crapo. Senator, good morning. Good morning. Well, my, oh, my, what a difference a little, a little election makes. <laughs> yeah, although the president doesn't seem to have taken the message. <laughs> what did he say? That uh, He heard what the voters said, but he also heard what the people who didn't vote said, uh, which apparently was what he wanted to hear. It's very, very interesting. Well, as someone who has dedicated themselves to public service, dedicated themselves to the process, what do you make of this executive order? What are people talking about in the cloakroom? Well, first of all, the president has clearly gone far beyond what any other president has ever done. You know, he tried to justify this executive order by saying that this is the kind of thing that previous presidents have done. Uh, previous presidents who have issued orders in this area were truly on a smaller scale helping to implement laws that had been passed by Congress and achieving the objectives of congressional decision and working with Congress. This president has, on a massive scale, essentially decided that uh, he's going to grant executive amnesty to uh, what appears to be up to five or maybe more than five million people and uh, give them a legal status in the United States, which is, in my opinion, clearly a violation of the executive power. Yeah, and the president states things, and some people take it as fact, but as you said, it doesn't, just because unfortunately the president says something, uh, doesn't mean that it's actually factually correct, especially when we're talking about immigration. That's right. And, and this president has not only said, well, you know, even in his speech, he said, uh, part of what I'm going to do is to enforce the border, and uh, he made another of other statements about what, what he intends to do. Um, well, he's said those kinds of things along the way, but it doesn't happen. The fact is it's very clear that he is moving ahead full speed to make this happen and to, to essentially try to grant amnesty where he could not get Congress to agree. And I, I, I believe it's up to, you know, Congress has to respond. And not only because of the significance of the issue, but because of the conflict, the crisis that has been created between Congress and the president in terms of who is it that uh, is charged under our Constitution with the authority to create law. And the president has essentially said, if you don't do it my way, I've got a pen and a phone, and I'm going to instruct the executive branch of government to do what I want it to do. And uh, I, I believe the American people should speak up very strongly against this. Congress should take every action it can to stop this from happening. Speaking of uh, happening, are you surprised that Chuck Hagel is uh, going to resign? I was surprised to see that. Uh, I, I did not support his nomination. Uh, I didn't think that he was the right one to be taking this position. But that being said... Uh, I'm surprised to see now that the president is asking him to step down. He, I, I, it, we, we don't know exactly what has caused this, but it appears that it is a result of uh, Secretary Hagel simply not being able to get through the political channels at the White House and communicate with the president and achieve the objectives that he needs to achieve as Secretary of State. Senator Mike Crapo with us, Kevin Miller in the morning, 580 KIDO. So we've got the big turnover. Senator, what do you expect to happen as far as your position? Are you going to move into a better office? And people say, you know, that's an inside joke, but when you are back in, in yeah. power, you get better offices, and are you eyeing a leadership position? Well, I will probably be staying in my same office. Uh, there is actually a chance to look around and see if, if different offices open up, I've over the years looked at those. Uh, so far, I haven't made a big move. Um, but, uh, you know, the, 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 it makes me smile when you ask that question because, as I see it, I'm going to be moving uh, along exactly as I have, uh, only the difference will be uh, the issues on which I'm working to reform our tax code, to control the explosion of government, to control the spending explosion in particular, and to deal with the regulatory overreach and the intrusions into privacy that we are seeing so aggressively now at the federal level. Those kinds of issues are issues. As a member of the majority, I'll be able to see my agenda, my efforts actually get attention in the committees and attention on the floor of the Senate. 
and we're going to start seeing votes on proposed solutions to the crises and the issues that we face in this country, uh, votes on issues that have been simply stuffed in the back drawer, if you will, for the last two or three years and not even allowed to be debated or considered. And I think it's going to be refreshing for the American people. Senator Crapo with us, Kevin Miller in the morning, Kevin Miller Show at 580-KIDO. Let me hit you with this, though. Um, and, uh, you know, we're all human. What about Senator Reid? How did he take the, the loss of things? Is he... Have there been any war- words uh, thrown around the, the gallery at all, or is he still the same? Uh, he's still the same. I mean, he's basically trying to move through this lame duck session and cram through as many nominations and push through as many uh, pieces of legislation uh, that he can because he knows that it's coming to an end. Uh, you know, it, it, it's just incredible that he is still – refusing to bring forward legislation that has been negotiated and worked on between the parties that is serious-minded legislation to deal with some of these critical issues, and he is still bringing forward legislation that has been crafted behind closed doors and trying to cram it through without any kind of legislative process other than bringing it to the Senate floor for a vote. And uh, like I said, he's also just trying to fill the agenda each day with nominations because he knows that he's not going to be able to force through the nominations in just a month or so after the Congress closes. How dangerous is that for Senator Crapo? I mean, uh, these nominations and everything, you know, as far as this lame duck session. Well, it's not too dangerous because the House of Representatives is controlled by the Republicans. And so whatever Senator Reid is able to force through will simply stall as it goes across the rotunda to the House, unless it is something that we have been able to reach agreement on. And, uh, you know, up until this point, Senator Reid has been very happy with not getting anything done. He, He mostly wanted show votes, he wanted a posture, and primarily wanted to stop the members of his caucus from being able to, or having to cast tough votes on tough issues. Uh, now, uh, he seems to be still, you know, pushing that agenda of having show votes, but he doesn't really have any objective, even still, in my opinion, of trying to get something across the finish line. This is mostly still show, and not a real threat that he's going to be able to push something through that uh, would be harmful. All right, Senator, we always want to get you out on something that you enjoy talking about that you continue to warn folks about across the country, and that's the state of the economy, people kicking in money into the stock market, yet no jobs for ordinary folks. Yeah, you know, we still have not dealt with the underlying problem in our economy, that being that we spend far more than we bring in in revenue to the federal treasury, and that national debt is a huge crippling factor to our economy. In fact, I saw a statistic recently, I'm not sure that it's correct, but uh, the president just granted more amnesty than he has created jobs during his presidency. To more, in other words, more people are going to get amnesty under his proposal than have been able to get a job under his presidency. We have a very stale and stagnant job market. We've got to recognize that we can't just spend ourselves into prosperity and that we must stop the explosion of government, which is getting small businesses and large businesses alike moving forward in building a strong economy. And if we can reform our tax code and control the spending and stop the explosion of federal regulatory overreach, then we should have a very strong opportunity to build a powerful economy. But we we cannot simply continue to lag along the way as we are now and expect that our economy is going to get better. Senator Crapo, any other thoughts, perhaps uh, a Thanksgiving memory you'd like to share with us? Well, you know, I guess my thought is I just, first of all, wish everyone a, a happy Thanksgiving. And, and my thought is this. Even though we are facing a lot of serious threats right now, whether they are threats from outside our nation or whether they are threats from within our nation, like our inability to control our own spending and our national debt, uh, the bottom line is if we – will 
get the business and get the right kinds of solutions put into place, we still have an opportunity to have a huge economic growth, a huge resurgence, and a great strengthening of America. And that's what I think Americans want to see. That's what I expect that they will see on the agenda as we move forward in the next Congress. And I hope it will not only give them hope, but it will give them an understanding that there is a pathway to build a strong future forward for this country. And that's what we need right now. We need to have a confidence in our, uh, among ourselves as a people, and we need to have a plan to get ourselves out of the difficulties that we now see facing us. Senator, we always appreciate it. You have a happy Thanksgiving. You too. Thank you.